Okay, Kate Bach, dear friend of mine, thank you for joining us on the Remodeling Podcast. Oh my God, we're so excited to be here. This episode is going to be easy breezy because we have known each other for almost over 10 years at this point. I feel like I might know everything about you, but let's find out. I know. How long have I... Like a long, long time. A long time. Okay. So I think that we met in 2008. And I feel like when I was, you know, creating the questions for this episode, like going all the way back to those times and like when we first started hanging out and we were at the beginning of our modeling careers, like a lot has changed. So I want to go all the way back. When did modeling come into the picture? Like how were you discovered? Modeling is such a funny thing because whenever people ask, like, how are you discovered? It's like such a, it's like as though I was like something special. I don't know. I was just like a little kid with like braces. I was nice and tall and lanky and I, you know, was quite lean and mean, I guess, like as a little kid, really showing that I was going to be a tall girl. And I was just at the local swimming pool. I was a swimmer on the swim team. And my mother agent, because in Vancouver, Canada, where I'm from, smaller town, there are modeling agencies. And there's a lot of TV commercials filmed and TV shows. But sort of modeling industry-wise, it's more like you would have a mother agent that would introduce you to other agencies. Uh, She was from my suburb. So she just met me at the pool. And we still have those Polaroids. I'm like, got my braces, my like dirty running shoes, my jeans with like rips in the legs, you know, like I was just like a tomboy. And they're like, do you want to model? And I was like, I don't know. What does that mean? And then I don't know, I started going to set. And honestly, the first things that really got me excited was like the craft services table. Like I was like, (laughs) unlimited candy on these jobs. Like this is some next level shit. (laughs) It's so funny you say that because I also remember in the early days when I first started modeling and I was traveling with my mom, like her and I would go and stay in hotels and the all you can eat breakfast. Like we were like, oh my God, we were staying at like a Park Hyatt in Ohio and we were like, wait, we can eat all this food. This is a major perk. (laughs) Totally. Or like room service. Like I was like, wait, you can just order food and like they'll pay for it. Like it's crazy. (laughs) Okay. So then you're discovered, you're a lanky teenager. You're kind of like, I, it was similar story for me. They're like, do you want to do this? And you're like, I mean, yeah. So when did you know it was time to start taking it seriously? And you're like, I'm really going to do this because I feel like from what I know about what you've told me, you were really young when you started traveling solo. So I was whatever discovered, I'm going to put that in quotations when I was 12 and then really right off the bat, because Vancouver was a good place to actually get kind of some you're, you know, test your feet in the water, kind of try it out. I did like Abercrombie kids campaign, like word spread all around school. It was like, oh my God, I was like famous. You know, I was like, oh my God, I'm such a big deal. Like I did Abercrombie kids. It was wild. And then I did a bunch of like, uh, TV commercials or like tiny guest starring roles on like a, whatever, you know, just like a featured talent, nothing crazy. I was not like a crazy actor, but I just like got comfortable, I guess, like doing stuff in front of the camera. And then when I was 16, I traveled a little bit and my mom would come with me to jobs. Um, Sometimes I went by myself and then right out of high school, it was like, okay, do you want to commit to this and do this? Like all your friends are applying to universities and colleges and they're all kind of like deciding to be roommates together in dorms. And I was like, ooh, but like I want to hang out with everyone or do I move to Paris and like try this? on for real. And I was like, I just can't not go to Paris. Like, I just I gotta go to Paris. Like I gotta try it. I had never been to Europe. So it was like definitely an alternate universe, but it was like so cool to like, just be going to a foreign land and figuring it out. I luckily did go to French immersion school. So it was like a little bit less scary, but I kind of like just jumped into it and like, did not know what was expected of me. I think I was just naive in a, in a good way. Yeah, totally. I mean, that story resonates. I was the same way. Like, but I went through the same thing as you where I had to make that tough tough decision. It was different than my peers. They were going to college and like partying mm-hmm. and at frat houses and in basements. And I was like, oh, like That's I it. wanna be doing that so bad. So yeah. what were those first couple of years like for you as a model starting out? So I I would say initially Funny enough, Facebook was like just coming out at this time for me also. (laughs) So I could sort of get on an internet cafe in Paris and like see the like 8,000 photos my friends would post from one night out at the the bar. And I'd be like, oh, 
like they're all gonna have all these memories without me and it was like sort of like gut-wrenching that I wasn't part of all of these kind of experiences that all my friends got to have together I was instead in Paris and I arrived and like was put in a model apartment I had three roommates lucky for me my first time around like two were from Seattle and one was from Toronto so like everyone spoke English very much everyone kind of like could relate we were sort of the same age we were like the babies in the model apartment attached to the agency so like you saw everyone all the time but you know at that point I was getting 100 euros a week from my agency. It was like 20 euros a week for my Metro card. We would get faxes every night with our schedule. We'd have to like program them out in our little book of like, take this Metro to this stop and then walk or take this. Because we didn't have phones with mapping at the time, you know? Like you had to write out your schedule. And like we'd all like get on our little coffee table on the floor with our books and like write out like, take this train to this train and then this train to this train and then look in your map book and then figure out how to walk from here to here. So I do say I know Paris like almost better than any city because that's all I did for multiple years was just walk around and take the metros around the whole city. And like I'd find all these cool spots. So that was kind of the fun part of it. But also it was hard because I had that 100 euros a week. I wasn't like making money yet. My agent that I think I was lucky felt very strongly about me and believed in me and, you know, had all these dreams for me, which meant we had to build up our editorial and we had to be really moody and edgy and skinny because at the time you could never be skinny enough ever like no matter how skinny I ever was I was not skinny enough and you had to kind of like build this reputation and then you could make money so I wasn't making money for like a while it was definitely not super easy to just not be earning anything (laughs) like yeah I obviously like (laughs) very much resonates with me too, with me too, your story, because like in the beginning, I remember it was like, if you did commercial modeling, you were a commercial model. And if you did high fashion modeling, you were a high fashion model, but like you couldn't do both. Like you had to like build up your high fashion career first. And like, you had to be cool and you had to be all those things. I do want to talk to you if you feel comfortable talking about your journey with your body and your relationship with it, which I'm sure has evolved so much over the years. I mean, now you're a mom, but I think this is something that you and I in our private time have talked about a lot, but I don't know if you've shared it very much. Like what did that feel like at such a young age when people are putting pressure on you to like lose weight Mm -hmm. and you're so young and impressionable? So I feel like the way that I often explain it is like at that time, it's almost like I'd never had an eating disorder in the sense of I was like disillusioned about the way that I looked. It was actually someone looking at me daily and telling me that I was fat. You know, like I wasn't imagining like, oh my God, I look terrible. It was like literally someone looked at you in your face and was like, you really need to lose weight like every day. I also grew up playing soccer. I was swimming. I was an athlete always. And I ate what my mom cooked at home, which was always very healthy. And then I moved to Europe and I wasn't on any sports teams and I had never been to a gym just to work out, to work out. Like I didn't really know what that was like and I didn't know how to cook and I was in a foreign country with like, I I didn't know what to make. So I was probably eating weird things and someone was literally like coming at you with a measuring tape or just looking at you and being like, no, it's not going to work. I mean, obviously it it wasn't imaginary. It was real. No, obviously I can really, I'll never forget when I was somewhere and they were like, yeah, just come in every few days and we're going to take your measurements every single time you come in. And the stress of that alone, like was such a shock to my system. Like you're a teenager. Like my biggest problem a month prior was like what I'm going to wear to prom. And now it's like, I got to lose weight and impress all these adults around me. Like it was really stressful. And it was like, I had never really known about like measurements or what suddenly there was like this goal of certain measurements that were in your mind. And I was like, so scared every time they're like, Hey, do you want to come in? We'll just like measure you super quick. And I'd be like, Oh my gosh, like they're going to know that I like ate food yesterday. You know, I just like, I didn't know how to do it. And I wish there was like a better kind of like education. Cause I do feel like now I know what to eat and I totally feel satisfied and I can eat and I can be lean. But I do think if it were still that time, I would still feel like I wanted to be skinnier all the time. 
Yes. I mean, also we have to remember that the times have changed so much in terms of our industry in general. Like then I always tell people when, like when you and I started modeling and the peak of things, 08, 09, everyone looked the same, had the same measurements, sometimes had the same hair color. Like we were all going after like the exact same appearance. So the end goal was in sight. And also what you said, like, it's like when people are, we weren't, it wasn't fiction that we felt like we were fat or we were thinking we were fat. It's people were literally saying that to us and like making us feel ashamed. And I feel like, I don't know. So what do you think looking back on those times is the biggest lesson you learned? Or how about something that you wish you could say to like 17 year old Kate? I feel like it was hard for my mom to watch me during those times. I mean, firstly, so another aspect of when I was in Paris and first left home, we didn't have FaceTime. We didn't have like a laptop with internet. I didn't have internet in my apartment. I didn't have, I had to go to an internet cafe to like log in with what was left of my hundred euros. So like not much to maybe check my email or to buy a calling card. And then when the calling card expired, you just like couldn't talk. And like, it was a nine hour time difference. I had to go into a payphone. I'd wear all my layers and like call my parents from the ground outside at midnight in Paris, like two blocks from my apartment. You know, like it wasn't easy to just communicate home. And so when I'd come home and I would just like, I remember I'd always leave Paris and be like, okay, I'm going home for the holidays. The holidays are typically a time where you eat like desserts and like the, that you want all the food that your mom makes at home and it's healthy, but it's not always like, weight loss, you know, creating. So I would be like, <laughs> I'm going to go home and I can't eat. And I would be so stressed about going home. Cause I'm like, I can't go home and come back bigger. Like I've already been on this like restrictive diet and like, I'm barely surviving over here and I can't go home and like n- come back here in January. Like I have two, two weeks off or whatever. So it was just always so stressful. And I wish I remember even like writing in journals and being like, I pray or I wish that one day I just will be able to like feel good in my body. And I wonder what that feels like because I couldn't imagine that that was a thing that I could feel. Cause I was like, it's always going to be a struggle. And you'd also have roommates that would be living with you. These other models that would everyone had different body types and everyone had di- was different ages and everyone had different, you know, like ways of doing it. There were definitely anorexic girls that just like did not eat at all. There was bulimic girls. There was a lot of barfing going on. And then there would be girls that would just be like, Oh, I ate a baguette and like some cookies today. And like, I lost weight. It's so crazy. And I'd be like, Yeah, I I really relate, obviously, and I do remember it feeling so stressful. And I remember any idea of being knocked out of, like, routine was, like, I can't because I have to do, like, my three-hour workout then, and then I eat this very specific thing. Like, I I literally felt like I couldn't live my life. So you're young, you're going through all of these changes, trying to figure out like what to do with your body and your relationship with it. At what point in your modeling career did you feel like, okay, this is actually going pretty well. And I really want to like pursue this full time. You ended up in New York. Was there a moment in your career where you were like, okay, this is like starting to work out for me. Yeah. I think I was in Paris for actually quite a while. And again, I think because I spoke French, it made it a little easier. So I'd always be able to communicate with my agents like in French or like at castings and around, I just like knew what people were saying. And I would always take my roommates, whoever was with me, and they'd be like, okay, can you ask them for this? Can you get that? And I was like, oh yeah, like this is really different for you guys if you can't like, if you don't know what's going on here. So I had like a love hate with Paris. I thought it was so cool and so beautiful. And I ended up moving into different model apartments and making different friends throughout kind of my time there. And some of my friends, we'd now then start to plan like, okay, let's do Paris for two months. And then let's both go to London. We have the same agency in London so we can both be in a model apartment in London. And then let's, so we'd kind of like start traveling together, which was way better. And then we'd like meet for a coffee or like go to our castings together. And like, it gave me a whole kind of life there that was so much happier than when I was just like, I'm scared and alone and I don't know what to do. And what is this? And I can't talk to home and I'm like so confused, but I think I always, I wanted it to succeed. I was, I never considered giving up. It was like when I went home and my mom was like, wait, you're not going to eat. Like, what are we doing here? This doesn't seem good. And I was like, I just have to prove them right. Like I'm worth it. I need to show them. Like, I just like, cannot get, I would never give up. Like, I just need to do this. And 
what I still say, I think one of my favorite parts of this job is like when you get to be on set and you get to be a character and you're like with the team and everyone has like, there's a mood board or there's a vision and we all like know what we're doing and we get to create these beautiful images. And it's like, I love doing it. It's so much fun to get to like go be someone else for a day. So I think I just so love once I came to New York, I was like, oh, I can like talk to my family. I can like be on the same time zone. I people like are speaking English. Like it just Paris was a lot more of a grind for me. New York was like, oh, you can just like have a normal life and do this. I also feel like I really relate. I remember also feeling so insanely determined because I didn't feel like there was a plan B, right? Because you watched your friends, they went to college. You're like, okay, that ship has sailed. Like my destiny is this. Yeah. I have to make it work. Okay. So once you're in New York, that is when you and I, I feel like eventually we, Mm -hmm. we meet each other and fall in love um, and hang out. (laughs) But then eventually also another thing that we shared together was being in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. (laughs) And some really fun years for us. How did that come about? And did you always know you wanted to be an SI? So funny, I think we met and like, I was like a little Paris traumatized and you were like a little modeling traumatized also. So we really bonded over like, okay, I'm not the only one that feels like this is crazy. Like, what are we doing? But also like, let's figure out how to do this best. We did a lot of soul cycling. We did a lot of hot yogas. We did a lot of suen, you know, we had our spots And I think it was really important for survival at the time to have friends that you could relate to. Like, I remember just being like, there's a very few amount of people that I've met that I feel comfortable with that understand what I'm going through. Like, no one gets this. This is a crazy thing we're doing. And it was so satisfying to just like have someone that understood. Did you always know that you wanted to be in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit? And what was the first time like? So I had always seen Sports Illustrated. I don't know. I knew about it as a kid. I remember seeing pictures of girls like in lily ponds in some tropical, beautiful destination and just being like, wow, that is the dream. Like what? They just get to fly around the world and like shoot in beautiful places and it seems like they like it. Um, And then I feel like it was always two big castings in the air. It was like the VS show casting and like all the girls would turn up and it was like a whole thing. And then SI was a little bit more like, They didn't see everyone. If you got the call for the casting, it was like a big deal. You went in one at a time. You didn't even know who else was being seen. You didn't know who else was being chosen. You didn't know, like, it was a little bit more secretive kind of. And I remember going into my meeting with MJ and I remember being surprised that I never had to, like, funny, take my clothes off, (laughs) like, get into a bathing suit. Like, I never had to show my body, which was always something that was like when you had to go to a casting and they'd be like, okay, can we shoot like in your underwear or in a bra and underwear, which I understand now as a human, like that sounds like such a weird thing, but that's what we had to do all the time was just like, okay, now like undress instead of these group of people that are going to take pictures of you in your underwear and bra. And you were like, okay, yeah, sure. No problem. Weird, but here we go. Um, and we just talked, I just talked with her. I laughed with her. I liked her. I thought she was fun. And I left being like, huh, like, I think I got that. Like, I feel like I nailed it. We just like hung out for an hour. It was a good time. I don't know. Um, and then getting that was, I think one of the most exciting things that I, that's like happened to me. Like I was so, so excited in that I actually got to share with my sister and my cousin. I was home in Vancouver, Canada when I got the call from my agent. So it was all, you know, super exciting. And then my first year I was shooting I had to go fly the day storm Sandy hit New York. It was like chaos. All the flights were delayed. I was going to Easter Island, Chile, and I was delayed in every possible way. On my way to Easter Island from the mainland, our flight had to turn around halfway through the six hour flight. So we had to go back and then we had to go out again because they didn't have enough like landing equipment on Easter Island. It was like everything that could have gone wrong to get to the shoot. Like it was a disaster. And then I landed and they're like, okay, you got to shoot in like two hours. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. But I think we knew each other had the casting, but it was almost like something that you didn't want to ask someone how it went. Cause it's like awkward if it's like you got it and I didn't, or I got it. And you just like, don't want to make anyone feel any sort of way. So you just sort of like, 
oh, I'm meeting with these people and like, you, let's see what happens. And then we were both like, wait, I got it. And it was like, wait, I got it. And then we both got to do it. And I feel like we're the luckiest people ever that you got, we both got picked the same year. I know. I, I remember that we both were like individually pursuing it and didn't really discuss it. And then like, we both found out that we got it. Like it wasn't, I remember that it was like, wait, I didn't even know that you were like going out to do that. And I agree. We were the luckiest people ever. I feel like those first few years of SI were like our very own, like sorority hazing, like situation. And it was like like such a thing. Yes. Like I was reflecting on this when I was like putting questions together for you. And I was just like, LOL reflecting on like, I remember they would have the party in New York and we would be out Mm -hmm. to like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Then we would, all the girls who were in the issue would take a chartered flight from New York Mm -hmm. city to Las Vegas. We would get there at like Mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning. And then at like five o'clock in the morning, you and I like had to be together, like filming and be full hair and makeup ready. And it was just such a whirlwind. I will Mm -hmm. never forget that time. But do you feel Mm -hmm. like eventually we did that for many years together and you eventually got like the Holy grail, the cover. I want to know what that Mm -hmm. felt like for you. Yeah. So the, also the cover with SI is an interesting, different thing. Cause most of the time when you're doing a magazine, if you're shot you're shot to like book a cover and story or just a cover. You always know ahead of time. And I think Sports Illustrated is only one of the only ones, at least, that everyone shoots. Nobody knows. You don't know if they had a, a game plan ahead of time. You don't know if like it's just who's, whose picture is best or like what vibe they're going for. Like you really don't know if like certain shoots were cover shoot tries and some weren't. So you don't know, and you as the model, at the time it was you went on Letterman and then letterman would introduce the cover model and i always was like oh my god are they finding out when letterman says because you'd have like a bunch of girls lined up and then it would call one of them and show the cover reveal it was like such a a moment in time like such a crazy thing so i feel like every year i kind of like secretly had my fingers crossed like maybe it's my year like maybe i would like no joke like find one of the bts shots of one of our shots that I liked. And I would like write Sports Illustrated on the top, like trying to visualize it, like try to make it, dream it into reality. I have so many from different years. Like I was like, maybe this year, this is the year. And this picture I really like, and I could totally picture it. And I would like try to dream it into. Oh my God. I love that. I should have done that yeah. because maybe I would have gotten it one year. But I think you brought up something interesting about VS and SI and the reason why that was such a big deal and every model was going for it was because we wanted to like make a name for ourselves. But now you and I lived through this massive shift that became social media. So talk about what that shift looked like when you went from like hustling as a baby model, then you're in SI, but at the same time, Mm -hmm. the rise of social media and influencers is happening. So this is like a remodel to me that you and I were both like, okay, now we have to be influencers. What was that like? I remember it initially. It was like, you have to talk to the camera. Like that just like feels crazy. Like, what am I going to say? Like what? Cause I generally, I would say, and Another really amazing thing about Sports Illustrated is that it put us in all these situations. We were doing interviews. We were like on carpets. We were just like on video doing different things for them all the time. And I had never done that before. Like typically as a model, you were just a photo. Like we had never really like been in emotion and acting like ourselves and answering questions as ourselves. So I do think that was good training for social media, not that we knew that was coming or what that was going to happen, but at least then it was like, okay, I know I can like talk on a camera. I'm not camera shy. Like I can do this. And then I don't know. Initially I remember being like, I don't get it. What do we do here? Like, what's the point? Like, what am I supposed to talk about? Like, what's the deal? And it was like, people would post just like a real editorial picture from a magazine, not like anything like a get ready with me or like without makeup or from your home. Um, it was a real shift and it's so different now. And I think we even touched on it the other day that we both watched that supermodels documentary and how it really made me miss our industry and the parts of it that were creative and on set. And like, if you shot with this person, it meant it was going to lead to something like this. Or if you got this job, it was like so big and so exciting. And it meant someone would like recognize you or know you or whatever. And now it's like, Hey, I got this offer for you to do a post for dog food. And you're like, Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Cause like, I know it's just what it is. 
<laughs> I know it's changed so much. Like on one hand, sometimes I'm like, how did it go from like being on set and being like this glamazon shooting with these huge photographers to now, like you said, doing partnerships with like a dog food brand or something like that. That, but sometimes now that you're a mom, which I want to talk about motherhood in a little bit, sometimes aren't don't you feel mm-hmm. grateful that you don't have to be like traveling to Paris or all the way to Easter Island yeah. for a day of work? You can partner with a brand in a different way. So, what does it look like for you now when you partner with brands? I actually just had a call with my team yesterday because I think it's a whole new time again and I'm fo- for my baby's four months. So like, I'm still sort of like figuring out who they say, like you change when you have a child, but it is, it's like, okay, so what does like current me do? Like I, so far I haven't left her for a night and I'm not sure, like maybe if it's a job for multiple days, she could come, but then you have to bring childcare and get a room and you know, it becomes a, a thing, but then I'm easier to travel sort of. Because so far, if it's two days in Europe, like, am I comfortable leaving her? And, like, what is that? What does that look like? Um, it's just, you know, we're, we're reimagining sort of, like, what it's all going to be. But I am so lucky and I feel excited that I'll be able to work from home and that I can shoot content and have partnerships. And, you know, we've moved to Miami now for my husband's career and I had to kind of like refine all my people. Like if I need help shooting something or filming something or hair and makeup, or I'm going to events, I'm like, how does that work here? Like, where do I go? How does it, you know, like I have my setup in New York. So I'm grateful that I can do that stuff from home now, but I also miss the like, the creative dreamy side of what it was before and just being able to turn up on set, like washed hair, you know, slept well and someone else took care of everything. And you just have to like go be you instead of you thinking location, hair, makeup, styling, lighting, all of, all of it is really cool and exciting that you get to make it your own, but also it's way more work. So it's way more work. I, I completely agree. Like sometimes you think it's going to be, it looked better. It looked easier because I remember when bloggers and influencers first became big, like it was just like, wait, I'm working like 12 hours on set to make that much money. And you're just like taking that picture from your bathroom. But I do have to say, I mean, I feel like people give influencers a lot of like flack, but they are the photographer. They are the hair. They are the makeup. They are the art director. You do kind of have to think and do a lot more as an influencer. Um, I'm glad that you brought up motherhood though, because I do feel like that's a massive remodel and change in itself. And you, you're still very in the midst of it. Like four months is so fresh, but I'd want to talk about pregnancy first and foremost, because I feel like I have to talk to you about (laughs) The fact that, first of all, you went through an entire pregnancy and didn't share it until the baby was yeah. born. The most epic reveal. Why did you do it that way? <laughs> so, I don't know. We didn't actually, like, start out with that intention. It wasn't like, let's do this thing where we don't tell anyone. I think I, like, initially was like, I'm not telling anyone. I didn't even like tell my parents until way past 12 weeks. Like I was like, I don't even believe this is totally real. Like, I'm not sure. We're like, should I take another test? Like, I'm, I don't know. I'm like, I don't look different. I don't feel different. I don't even know if this is real. And then, and then it was like, okay, now it's showing like now it's part, but I was in Ohio a lot at the time and I was, you know, going to basketball games and just like oversized sweatshirts and sort of like no one knew. And I was like, huh, Like, no one knows. And, like, I don't have to tell them. There's no... And then I just, like, started feeling so sick all the time, as you know very well. You know, we're very lucky and have been in sync in life in many times. And pregnancy being one of them was one of the best things ever. Because you just need sometimes someone to commiserate with on what's going on. Because it can be a little more savage than they paint in the movies, you know? Yeah. I just remember you and I being in like the very early days and not feeling great. And you would FaceTime me and I wouldn't even see you. It was just like blackness and silence. And I was like, hello, like, are you there? And you're like, yeah, like it's bad. I'm like, (laughs) but it's so true that like having someone there with you to like, I mean, you're right. People paint it so rosy, but like, I couldn't agree more that like it is, it's such a tough time. But what did it look like for you in terms of your relationship with your body? For me, watching it change like that was not my favorite, Mm -hmm. like, especially with our background as a model. Like, what do you think now? Mm -hmm. Um, I, 
I honestly think so generally in life, if I were to describe myself, I'm like quite positive. I like feel good. I eat healthy. I just kind of like know if I work out and I eat clean food the way that I just sort of naturally do, I just kind of feel pretty good. And I never experienced some chronic illness or pain or, you know, had back issues or joint issues, nothing like that. So I was always like, why, you know, we should just be happy. I don't know. We're good. And then pregnancy really threw me for a loop because I just felt terrible like every single day. Just every day I felt bad. And I don't like being negative, but I would feel like if I wasn't talking to you or my one other friend that was also pregnant at the same time, so we had like a nice little like circle of communication trust circle, um, they would be like, oh my God, you know, like, are you so excited? How are you feeling? And I would just like, no, I want to throw up. I have a headache. Today I have vertigo. Yesterday I had hot flashes. Like I got a back spasm. I, I was just like, I don't know what to tell you. I just feel awful every day. And like, every day was a new bad symptom. Like it just, it just was the worst for me. And I am so grateful that it, you know, worked out and I have a beautiful little baby with me, but it was just so not what I was picturing. And I had never felt bad like that. I think still now I'm four months postpartum and I'm like, Oh my God, did I just wake up and I have energy and like, I'm excited for the day. And, you know, I'm in the apartment now that we, I was while I was pregnant and I look outside and I'm like, I'm going to go for a, a long walk. I'm going to go to the water. I'm going to walk, you know, whatever. And I, I didn't go outside. I, I couldn't walk. Like I was like, if I walk, I will get stuck. Cause I can't come back. I'm too tired. Like I can't do it. And I'm like, this sounds ridiculous, but I, I can't. So I'm like suddenly a recluse. I, it was just a lot a lot of challenges for the pregnancy um, part yeah, for me I, and I prefer not being pregnant. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you that you are such a sunny, positive person. And I feel like I can always go to you for that, like uplifting and like logical, positive energy. But yes, I, I, pregnancy can really take a toll for someone who is in the midst of pregnancy and like having a really hard time. Do you have any words of advice? Survive. I remember calling one of my girlfriends who she was super sick when she was pregnant. And I was like, help, like SOS. I don't know what to do here. Like, I'm really struggling. And she was just like, you have to take it one day at a time. And like, everyone's going to give you advice or tell you, you know, like, you're not going to be nauseous after week 12 or everything's going to change or you're going to feel so much better. And like, you might not, I'm so sorry, you might not. And you just have to take it day by day, breath by breath. And like, don't get too ahead of yourself. Also, like you are growing a human and I know you can't really like see it so much. Mine was very far set back. So I couldn't, I didn't connect with her much when she was in there. Um, but you are actually like growing human. Like, please remember, like there's like your body is growing bones and lungs and teeth and, you know, hair and all the things. So you just have to kind of like take it a day at a time and let it be. Yeah. That's I kind of the best. I completely agree. Like my tip is like, do whatever you can to survive, whether that's like take naps where you can, if you can only survive on gummy bears, you got to survive on gummy that's bears. Fine. Like. Yeah, whatever it is. And, and, and I think what you said earlier is like having some sort of support group. Like I remember when I first got Cute. pregnant, I reached out to like every person that was a mom or pregnant. And I was like, please be my friend. Please let me complain yeah. to you. Like, please let me talk to you. Um, but yeah. you talked on it, you touched on it a little bit in terms of like the change and like how you change as a person after you have the baby. Now that your baby mm -hmm. is here, how are you approaching like your career and like what's next for you? Is that exciting for you to think about at this point? Or are you kind of like, I'm not sure I'm going to feel it out? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a, an interesting question, especially with our industry is like, okay, am I going back to try to be as close to my former self as possible? Or am I like leaning into the mom momstagram, the mom, you know, the mom world and making that my new identity or is a little bit of both depending on the project. I think, I'm not sure yet. I don't think I'm gonna go full only mom content. I think that we really like to have some moments to ourselves and at home and just make decisions that also like the, you're not gonna get judged for, you know, not that I'm doing anything I think is wrong. I think I'm doing great things, but I think a lot of people feel comfortable sharing their opinions about how you parent or are with a baby more than any other topic that maybe I'm just not going to like go there. Um, and I want to 
be my former self somewhat, like get back to certain fashion things and get back into the fashion industry. But we've also moved cities and we have a baby and I'm just trying to kind of figure out which niche is sort of like the one I want to lean into the most. You know, I love home decor. We just bought a new house. I have to decorate a whole house. I want to like share that and show that because that's something that every time I get a question about like what sconce to pick on a wall, I am searching all day. I'm so invigorated by, you know, anything home decor, which I don't always think people love so much. Um, and then I've been going to some fashion events in Miami and there is that kind of world here. And I feel so lucky that I'm in a city that I can still kind of go to events and do fashion things and be around fashion girls and sort of like get inspired with style in that way. Um, and then beauty and content creating and being able to, you know, work with brands that I love or invest in brands that I love. And what is really cool is doing kind of some name and likeness deals so that you can be an equity partner with a brand, but it's a brand that you believe in and that you use and that you like. And so it's kind of a natural content creation. And that is so lucky that I just get to share parts of my life. You know, everyone's doing these things and I get to like share it and potentially be paid to share it is, is a pretty cool aspect of what we're like allowed to do these days. Um, so I think it's figuring it all out, like what what is your new identity? Because there's a lot of options and a lot of directions to go in. And then there's always the, should I be home with my baby? How often should I be home? Like, should I leave? Is it okay to leave? Do I feel bad leaving? Like, where's the balance? Yeah, I absolutely feel the same way. And can, of course, relate. And I think that's like being postpartum. It's like exciting because there's so many avenues and ways that you can go about it. But then you're also like, yikes, I don't know how to make those decisions. But I do want to ask you one other thing. So you are married to Kevin Love. He is an NBA player, something that we've Mm -hmm. talked about a lot. And what you went through a lot is that he's been in Ohio. You've been in Miami. You guys are in New York. How do you feel grounded? And especially now that you're Mm -hmm. a mom, you have to like create home and groundedness. Like, so quickly and be so agile. Mm -hmm. And I really admire that about you. How are you doing that? I mean, it's, it's a lot. I feel like, I feel like I always FaceTime my parents and they're like, what chaos are you dealing with this time? Cause every time it's like, we're moving, we're, we're travel, we're somewhere like we, something happened crazy and I'm exhausted because I'm unpacking or I'm packing or I'm moving or I'm, you know, I was due to deliver our baby, um, when we found out I was pregnant, it was like, oh, I'm due during the NBA finals. Like, <laughs> that would be so crazy. But like, that ain't happening for us this year, you know. And then it did happen for us. It was it was the craziest playoff run you could have ever imagined. This team, like, this has literally never happened in the history of, like, sports. That the team that had to fight for even a spot in the playoff for the last seed was in the finals is, like, crazy. So I ended up giving birth during game four, which is, again, like, another wild basketball world thing and we could have a whole other episode about wags because that's like a life of its own I did kind (laughs) of want to talk about wags but like I feel like I've taken enough of your time but yes I do remember you about but Kevin was there for the birth Kevin was there for the birth it all worked out he I found out I had to get an emergency induction and then came home to tell him okay, babe, just go play in the game. Just like, do you, I'm going to head to the hospital with all of our stuff and I'm just going to like get induced. We're going to like start this labor situation because I had preeclampsia very suddenly at the end. And she was like, we need to get the baby out now, but just playing the game and then just come meet me at the hospital when you're done. And he was like, I'm sorry, what was that? What? Cause I, that was, that was, you know, and interesting. And it was game four. It was a very big game. It was a home game. So he was here, but he made it for the birth and then had to leave the next game back to Denver. Like the day she was born, he had to leave at night to go back to go play in game five. So it was, it was a lot. It all worked out, but trying to feel grounded. I think since I met him, it's been a lot of like, I was always back and forth from Ohio. I was tried to be there when he was home. And then I would be in New York if he was on a road trip. If I was shooting, I would travel. If I was shooting and then I could like meet him on a road trip, I would meet him. I was like on a plane every four or five days, typically. Um, And trying to make everywhere feel like home is not easy. And trying to feel settled when everything's in storage or in different cities and is it warm? Is it cold? Or I don't know what we're doing. I feel a little bit crazy right now with that, but I guess the people become the comfort instead of the place more. And we, yeah, just 
can feel at home in a hotel room or on the road or all over because that's just kind of what it is. And I think we both can appreciate that, you know, basketball and being an athlete isn't a career that lasts forever and modeling the way that we were traveling all the time all over the place also has an expiry date that is much earlier than many careers. Um, and it's like almost as we're sort of like aging out is when many careers is when you start to like have an important role in a company, which is a weird thing to deal with also. So I'm just like, let's fully commit to whatever he needs for now for his career. I can move around. I can fly places and I have been able to. And now I can do a lot from home. And I think just being together is what makes us feel grounded. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kate, you have been a fantastic guest. Thank you so much for coming on the Remodeling Podcast. I feel like you have lived many lives and I've been lucky enough to experience all of your different phases. So thank you so much for coming on. Can you share where people can find you? At Kate Love on Instagram and TikTok. Actually, don't know what. Oh, Love Kate. I think Love Kate. At Love Kate. I know. I was like, Kate, well, didn't get that wild. Um, And... Yeah, I'm going to just have a little bit more of a presence now that I'm not wanting to vomit every day. (laughs) I'm so happy for you. Thank you. (laughs) 